Hello, everyone. Welcome to the broadcast tonight. Thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Jerry Hasty. I will again be your host tonight. Uh, let's have a word of prayer, and we'll get right into the message. Amen. Father, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you that in your word we find the life-changing revelations that help us to grow in Christ. We thank you, Father, that as we hear your word, faith comes. And as faith comes, we choose to act on that faith. We choose to walk in that faith. And so now, Father, we, we ask for utterance for me that you will help me to speak the very oracles of God. We ask, Father, that you will open ears to hear what you have to say to them through me. And we ask, Father, for a change lives tonight. And we ask all this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. All right, tonight, everybody, uh, I want to say good evening to you. I want to start with going back to our foundation verse that we started off in our last session with. And it is in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. And again, we'll be speaking about the spirit part of man. We've already talked about the threefold being, and we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit about that tonight. It says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, in a quick review from last session, like I said, we talked about being a threefold being. You are a spirit. You have a soul. That is your mind, your will, your emotions, your thinker, your feeler, your chooser. Um, your personality is probably the best way to describe your soul in one word. And you live in a body. You're housed in this body. Amen? And so, unlike most animals, or unlike every animal on this planet, we're spirit beings. Animals have a soul and a body, but they're not a spirit being. Despite what many Christians think, and many, many people in general, but even many Christians, uh, we're more than just a soul and a body. Unfortunately, many Christians only see us as a soul and a body, and that, that robs them from understanding who they are in Christ and what they have in Christ as spirit beings. Uh, and so we talked a little bit about that last time. Uh, we learned that, that God is a spirit, and since we were created in his image and his likeness, we too, we also are spirits. Amen? So let's pick up where we left off. Let's go now to uh, Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. Now God is talking to Adam and Eve here, our first parents. And this is what he says to them. He says, and the Lord... God commanded the man, saying, You may surely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. So that sounds like a pretty straightforward, easy command to keep, right? I mean, if you were told to not eat of a tree in your yard, you wouldn't do it, right? Seems pretty simple. But Adam and Eve, as they bebopped and hip-hopped around the garden, we don't know how long it was before they decided to eat of the tree. The Bible doesn't give us any real indication of that, but... Uh, you know, they were, before they ate of the tree, they were walking around in the spirit. They definitely had a soul and a body, but they were ruled by their spirit. Their, their spirit man uh, was in charge. And um, so, in other words, their mind, their will, their emotion, and their body, which I, when you look at your, your soul and your body, you can call those your flesh. Sometimes your body is just called the flesh. Oftentimes the, the, the soul and the body are considered the flesh or the soul, depending on, on how it's used in the Bible. 
But as spirit beings, they were ruled by their spirit, not their flesh, not their soul, not their body. They weren't ruled by their mind, their will, and the emotions. Um, but then something happened. So drop down with me or turn with me to Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 and 7, <clears throat> 1 through 7. And we're going to read this, and we're going to talk about this. It says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said that you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it lest you die. <clears throat> but the serpent said to the woman, uh, You will not surely die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some of that fruit to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. Okay, so can anyone say high treason? The very first command they were given in the garden, they broke. They broke it and committed high treason against heaven. No one had sinned before. They were the only two here, and no, neither one of them had sinned before. And when they did this, they committed high treason against heaven. You know, people often lessen their sin and say, well, my sin is not as bad as somebody else's sin. It doesn't look like this sin was very bad, right? They ate of a fruit they were told not to eat of. And look where we are now, plunged into a world of sin and destruction, ruled by Satan. The world, uh, the Bible says that he's the God of this world. All because of this. They handed over their authority to the enemy. We're not going to get into that. But they handed over authority when they committed high treason to the enemy. And he's been in charge of this world since. Now, he's been defeated by Jesus, but we don't see the consummation of that yet. We don't see... Uh, Christ returning and finalizing uh, what he did on the cross. Amen? But that's not what we're talking about tonight. Uh, if you notice that Adam and Eve did not die physically immediately when they ate of the fruit. Remember, it says that if you eat of the fruit, you're going to die. So what part of them died? If it wasn't their physical being, what part of them died? What died in them was their spirit. Now, and what that means, death in this category, death in this, in this context, means they were spiritually dead. Their, their spirit was spiritually dead. They still had a spirit, but they were spiritually dead to God. They were separated from God. They were alienated from God now because they were no longer in legal, uh, in legal status with God because of their disobedience. <clears throat> So, what we see here is that they didn't die right away. It goes on to say in the Bible that, you know, Adam lived 900 some years, and I don't know, his sons lived like 900 some years, and then slowly as time goes on, the age begins to, to dissipate, and, you know, people start living to be, uh, you know, like in their hundreds, and then drops into the 70s, and so forth, and so forth. But they didn't die physically right away. That took time. It reminds me of, of something that happened uh, with me. I would say about, man, I'm thinking about nine months ago, ten months ago, my wife and I were out uh, at a store and we were looking at some plants. And I decided to buy a couple of cactus, both the same type. But, you know, we brought them and we brought them home and we were reading about them and it said that, you know, you shouldn't water them more than, you know, once every month or a couple of months. And I thought to myself, man, that, that's a long time to go without water. So I decided, in my brilliance, to water them weekly. So I here I am watering these cactuses weekly when it tells you to maybe not even water them once a month, maybe water them every, 
couple months. So needless to say, about two, about two months maybe went by, and I started seeing at the bottom of the cactus, where it comes up from the ground, the actual base of the cactus on both of them, in both, uh, in both vases, it was completely brown and dead. That part, it had rotted out their roots, and, and they were dead. They were dead. Completely dead. In fact, they were so done that uh, the top portions that were connected to it on several of them fell off and are, were laying in the dirt. So I just left them there. I figured, you know, okay, it's dead. Both plants are dead. We're going to move on. We'll, we'll, as soon as they're dead, as soon as they're completely gone and they're dried and green and no longer green, uh, I'll throw them in the garbage. And, you know, next time I'll know better. I won't water them once a week despite what the instructions said. And um, so I waited, waited, waited. And we're talking about six months now. It's been six, seven months. And you know that the portions that fell off the cactus that were green, that are laying in the dirt, and the portions that are still connected but are separated somewhat from the, the base, to this day, right now, they're still green. They still look alive. They're alive. They still look alive. But they're dead. They're dead. And sooner or later, I don't know if it'll take another six months, another eight months. I'm just curious as to how long it's going to take. Sooner or later, those pieces will also die. They'll get brown and they'll die. But this has been out without water for about five, six months. And yet they're still green. Why is that? Because down at the root, they died immediately. When they, you, when they finally got all that water, they just died. But when the pieces stopped getting water, because they were no longer getting any more water from the base, they stayed green, and they're still green to this day. That's how it is with Adam and Eve. They died inside, spiritually. But it took a while for that evidence of the death inside to show outside and for them to actually die physically outside. But that's what, that's what happened with them. Okay? So they didn't die immediately physically uh, when they ate of the fruit, but they did die spiritually. Okay? But before Adam and Eve, and Eve fell, they were spirit-ruled. They were guided and directed by their spirit. They did have emotions. They did have a, a, a mind, a will, and emotions, but they, they weren't dominated by those. But after they fell, they were no longer dominated by their spirit. They were dominated by their flesh. They were dominated by their soul, their mind, their will, their emotions, everything they could see in the natural, and by their bodies. Amen? Amen? Um, so when they sinned, they took on the nature of the, of the being that was sinful. So when they took on that nature, they, they suddenly became sin-natured creatures. They suddenly became sin-natured creatures, okay? And then that sin nature was passed down to all of us, to the rest of humanity, because of their original sin. Amen? In other words, you became a sinner not because you sinned, but because you were born a sinner. You were born in sin before you ever did anything. Amen? Let's look down a little further to Genesis 3, 8 through 13. Let's see what happened to Adam and Eve once they ate of this fruit, once they did what they did. <clears throat> it says, and they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden of the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called out to the man and said to him, where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, who told you you were naked? 
Have you eaten of the tree which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave me, she gave me the fruit, and I did eat. And then the Lord God said to the woman, what, what is this you have done? And the woman said, Well, the serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the very first thing that happened with Adam and Eve is they were afraid of their creator. They were afraid of him coming at them and, and hurting them. They had no reason to be afraid of him, but suddenly their nature had changed and they were in for self-preservation and they were afraid that God was going to kill them, that God was going to wipe them out because they had sinned and they had disobeyed. And instead of, of Adam just confessing his sin to the Lord and saying, I blew it, I fell, forgive me, Lord, I'm so sorry. Instead of Adam, Adam and Eve doing that, when he asked Adam what happened, Adam said, it's the woman that you gave me. So now they're playing the blame game. So that he not only blames God, then he blames his wife. He threw his wife under the bus. Instead of protecting her and taking care of her, he threw her under the bus. And so then God turns to Eve and says, so what did you do? And Eve said, the devil made me do it. So they've totally changed. Instead of being truthful, and, and this is the God that they walked uh, with every day in the cool of the day. The Bible says they walked with him in the cool of the day every day. Same God. And now they're afraid of their creator because they rebelled against him. Their nature changed. They were no longer being able to fellowship with him spirit to spirit. Now they're trying to fellowship with him spirit to soul. And that doesn't work. You can't fellowship with God with your soul. You can only fellowship with God with your spirit man. Amen? So they went from spiritually alive to spiritually dead and being totally afraid of God. Totally afraid of their creator. This is what sin will do to you. This is what sin will do to you. So that's that's all we have for today. I don't, I don't want to go any further. We're going to pick this up next time, and we'll we'll talk further about this. Um, but let me just say this: if 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 you've heard these messages, any of the messages I've I've preached, and and you want to receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, we can do that today. Uh, you just have to pray this prayer that I'm going to pray from your heart, and if you do. You're going to get born again, and, and, and Jesus is going to come into your life, and you're going to become a new creature in Christ. Amen? And then, you know, we need to get you into a good Bible-believing church so that you can grow in your relationship with Christ. Amen? All right, so uh, if you want to accept Jesus as Lord uh, and turn your life over to him, just pray this prayer after me. Say, Father God, I'm a sinner. I have fallen short of your glory. But Father, I know you sent Jesus to die for my sins, to take my penalty, to take my place. And because of that, today, Father, I receive Jesus as my personal Lord. And I thank you that he is my Savior. Come into my life. Make me and mold me into what you want me to be. In Jesus' name, amen. You said that prayer. You got born again. You need to get into a good Bible-believing church, as I said. If you don't know where to go, if you live here in Orlando, please contact me. I'm, I'm here in Orlando, and you can come to my church. Uh, but... If you live outside of the area, you know, just drop me a message in the comment section and let me know that you were watching and that you got born again. And, you know, give me a way to get in touch with you. Uh, we can email back and forth if need be. Uh, just give me your email address or whatever, and we'll, we'll discuss it. We'll talk about it, and we'll, I'll find a, a church for you to go to, a church home for you. Amen? So with that said, I just want to end tonight and tell you to have a good night. Uh, remember, God loves you. 
I love you, and we'll see you next time.